This is the all new Vanilla OS and believe me when I say it. This innovative distro is the next step in the evolution of desktop Linux. Created by some of the most seasoned and brightest minds in the Linux community, Vanilla OS is the next big thing. Now I know you might be saying, great, another Linux distro, but why? And why do we need so many Linux distros anyway? That is a good question, but the developers of Vanilla OS ask a better question. Why not all the Linux distros all at once? Vanilla OS is an immutable Linux distro which comes with the ingenious dual root system for superior stability. It is an Ubuntu based distribution but it is Fedora based and Arch based as well. Kinda. It gives a stock gnome experience on top of Ubuntu and brings some of the coolest and state of the art technologies right to you. Really, Vanilla OS is a Linux distro unlike anything out there. So let's jump right in and have a look at the user interface, the performance, stability and the new technologies that make Vanilla OS not just different from other distros but also better. This is Aquil, it's great to finally meet you guys. Let's start off with the user interface. Vanilla OS ships with the stock GNOME desktop and looks gorgeous out of the box. There is a large group of people who enjoy using Ubuntu and at the same time love the stock GNOME experience. Vanilla OS is just the right thing for those people. We get the pure GNOME experience here and using it is a delight. The latest GNOME 43 is available here and it looks gorgeous. I sometimes feel that GNOME has reached that point where it's just perfect. It's mature, fully usable and the workflow is very productive. We get the new status menu here with these trendy builds. These quick toggles let you change settings like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with single clicks. The application theme is Adweta instead of Ubuntu's Yaru and this completely refreshes your Ubuntu experience. At times, you'll not even feel like you're using Ubuntu. The icon pack 2 is GNOME default and the whole system looks really colorful here. Vanilla OS brings its own set of wallpapers and I love this. You can use stock GNOME on a lot of Linux distributions, but on Ubuntu, you get a modified version of GNOME that's mainly there for the branding and the UI consistency. For me, Ubuntu's GNOME can be an improvement on the stock GNOME because of the panel, but you might enjoy stock GNOME more, so Vanilla OS brings you that opportunity to use stock GNOME on Ubuntu. While the user interface on Vanilla looks amazing, it's not Vanilla's biggest selling point, not by far, because we have some really impressive things to see here. We have so many amazing Linux distros and they all come with their own pros and cons. Vanilla OS developers have devised a superb technique to derive these pros from other distros using their innovative Apex Package Manager. And this is one of those features that will take Vanilla OS to the stars. With Apex Package Manager, you can install software from Ubuntu repositories, Arch user repositories, Fedora software repositories and Alpine repositories using their native apt, yay, dnf and apk package managers respectively on Vanilla OS. This is revolutionary. Apex Package Manager is developed by Vanilla OS developers to bring packages from multiple distros to its users. And Apex uses DistroBox under the hood, so mixing and matching applications from different distros has no adverse effect on the system as all these packages and their dependencies are kept separate. So if a certain application is not available on Ubuntu or you want to install the latest version, you can conveniently install it from the Arch user repositories and it will bring its dependencies from AUR, install and run like it's running natively on Arch Linux, all while not messing with your vanilla OS root system. Yes, your main root system remains untouched so you'll never get any conflicts which might cause the system to malfunction. Everything is isolated. At the same time, these apps integrate very smoothly with the system and they respect your system theming. They can access the files and folders on your home directory and they run flawlessly. Their naming is a bit detailed here but it's by design. It may be improved in the future. Apex Package Manager delivers an experience that is previously unseen on any operating system. This is just phenomenal. Vanilla OS developers have taken a superb approach to the software solution here and this is going to be groundbreaking. Along with that, you can install flat packs and app images if you wish. The choice is given to you on your first boot. Ubuntu comes with snaps pre-installed, but with Vanilla OS, you get to choose. So in the software department, Vanilla OS scores above all. Vanilla developers have harnessed the power of all Linux distros by implementing the brilliant Apex Package Manager. But I want you to note that this new Package Manager and the distro itself are in their early infancies, so at times, they may behave unexpectedly. Whenever you are installing anything using the Apex command, I recommend that you don't interrupt it, because it might lead to some difficult situations. In the future, as it becomes more mature, the package manager will be able to handle such things I'm sure. But right now, use it carefully. Top points for the innovation here. Vanilla OS brings many advanced features and tech to give the users a rock solid stability and a dependable computing environment. 
Many top Linux distributions are enterprise-centric in their interests and sometimes prioritize server features. See, Ubuntu is one of the best desktop operating systems in the world. I use it and I love it. But things like LivePatch are great for servers and enterprise systems. I mean, as a desktop user, is it really that inconvenient for you to restart your computer after an update? Vanilla OS prioritizes desktop users, and the features it offers makes the lives of desktop users so much better. The first release of Vanilla OS is based on Ubuntu 22.10. This is a great choice as it will give Vanilla OS developers the time to refine and tune their operating system until the next LTS version of Ubuntu. It will give them time to play around with things. Vanilla OS might be based on an interim release, but it's very reliable. It uses the innovative AB root partition. When updating the system, which I hope we can all agree can be a big deal at times. The update is written onto a copy of the root file system and not the main root. And the updated file system is used only after a successful update and a reboot. Essentially, we have two root systems running and this makes sure that even if an update breaks something or messes something up, you always have a working operating system. The updates are applied only after a reboot, so at no time is your system shocked with updates. And if something still goes wrong, your old root file system is still there. While AB root system for updates is not entirely new, I think it is the first time any Linux distro has implemented it. Google uses this exact update procedure in its Chromebooks and let me tell you, updates on Chromebook are butter smooth. So from a user experience point of view, Vanilla developers score another masterstroke. Secondly, at the moment, Vanilla OS is an immutable system, meaning you cannot make any changes to the core parts of the system. Sure, you can install drivers using the driver manager, you can update the core system, but for the most part, everything is locked. Apps are installed in containers in your home directory and not directly under the root file system. This means whatever you do, the core operating system itself cannot be modified. So there's no chance of anybody messing up the system. Messed up drivers, boot up errors and other fatal issues can be completely avoided here. You will have a working system all the time. I know that during development, Vanilla OS had a switchable immutability. You could turn it on and off. But near the release of the stable release, they made some huge changes to the core and right now the system is immutable. But the developers have plans to give this switchable control to us. We'll see it in the upcoming releases. Really, while the idea here might feel simple, the implementation is not really that simple. But the Vanilla OS developers have done amazing work here. Vanilla OS brings a lot of new things, things we haven't seen before. To make these new features easier and more consumable to the users, Vanilla has created simple user interfaces. While for most things and settings, we can use the usual GNOME ways. And for the new features that Vanilla brings, like the APX apps and driver, can be easily managed using the Vanilla Control Center. So the new features that Vanilla brings are also very easy to use and consume. So from a usability point of view, Vanilla is just amazing. Vanilla utilizes a tried and tested user interface. GNOME is one of the finest ways to use a computer and it provides a very refined user experience. Vanilla utilizes this desktop and adds its own goodies to the mix. But since this is a completely new distro that's doing a lot of things differently, there is friction. I won't deny that. The GNOME software store wasn't working for me. APX Package Manager did show some unexpected behavior which I could solve only because I had been playing with it for some time now. And most apps need to be installed using APX command which can be a completely new experience for many people. But overall, I enjoyed it. After spending some time with the system, you'll know how to get around the system. Stability and usability are top grade with Vanilla OS. Performance on Vanilla OS is pretty good. The system is very optimized throughout for day-to-day -day usage. Working on this system feels very nimble. App opening and app switching are all very smooth here. It uses the latest GNOME desktop that is version 43. This new desktop environment is designed to make your computing experience smoother and more efficient than ever before. Since the last four versions, GNOME developers have focused highly on improving the performance. Better memory management, better use of GPU, make GNOME 43 a great performer and productivity booster. We also get a new driver manager here to install and manage drivers. This ensures that you are getting the best possible performance out of your hardware all the time. Let's talk about gaming on the new Vanilla OS. Because the founder of Vanilla OS, Mirko B, understands gaming on Linux. He's also the creator of the now famous Bottles. I've talked about Bottles before too. Bottles is a nifty tool that lets you launch Windows games and applications in an optimized environment using Wine, Proton or Soda. Proton is the blockbuster software derived from Wine that lets you play Windows games on Linux like they are native. This is what makes Steam's Steam Play work, and we know that is huge. I've been gaming with Proton and it works really well. You can play many top Windows exclusive titles like GTA 5, No Man's Sky, Witcher 3 and many more on Linux. And they are very easy to set up using either Steam or Bottles. 
You can purchase games on Steam and then you can install and play them like they are Linux native. With Bottles, you can use your own games. Both work great. Check out ProtonDB for game compatibility details. As mentioned already, Vanilla OS also has a driver manager for easy GPU driver management. The gaming performance too is very good here, be it casual time killers or intense action. Vanilla OS got you covered. Vanilla OS is a new Linux distro, this version being the maiden release, but it is created by people who know their stuff. The developers of Vanilla have been very involved in the Linux community, not just involved but active contributors for a long time. I very strongly feel that Vanilla OS is going to take off. It is Ubuntu based so most commands and procedures that work on Ubuntu work here too. And the new things that Vanilla brings like the Apex Package Manager have either simple GUI interfaces or good documentation online. So right now, you're good to go. And I feel that this distro is going to have a very strong community soon because there is a lot of chatter about Vanilla OS online. It is a good distro and the developers have done work on it so it deserves it. Vanilla OS is fairly simple to install and get started with. Use the link in the description to download the ISO file, flash it onto a USB stick and live boot into it. Vanilla OS has its own installer and it's very easy to use and takes around 10 minutes to finish installation. But Vanilla OS doesn't let you configure partitions at the moment. It automatically partitions on your selected storage device but it formats and uses your entire device. You lose all your data, so just be careful there. Really hoping the developers give us more options here. The installer lets you choose from a good set of starter software. I would recommend you install everything on the list. After installation, the welcome app and the Vanilla Control Center let you install the GPU drivers and other stuff. And after that, you're ready to go. Vanilla OS is a breath of fresh air. Although it's very, very early to make any judgments about this distro, I'm very hopeful about Vanilla. I love distributions that are stable. As a Linux enthusiast, they are very easy to recommend. At the other end of the spectrum, it is the cutting edge distros like Arch, Fedora or Garuda Linux that are exciting to use. Vanilla is doing something very different. It is giving us a stable base, in fact an unchangeable base if you deem it so, but you can still go ahead and do whatever you want with it. With Distrobox, which is the underlying tech used here, Vanilla OS is giving the power of containers to everyday home users. I like this. While I'm not sure about what kind of a user experience it will be for a long term, I do know it is a fantastic approach. It's innovative and it's cool. The magic happens when you install apps using the apx command. You're installing apps on your system but inside a container. And using DNF or AUR flags, you can install applications from Fedora or Arch user repositories. The apps will install and run like they are natively installed, no problems there. But they are containerized and they bring their own dependencies from their respective distros. Tell me that's not mind blowing. At the same time, it is a new experience which might require that you play around with the system for a couple of hours to get a hang of everything. And the system needs polishing up here and there. But I am hopeful about Vanilla OS and I've installed it as my main system. So I've got a fun few days ahead. Or months. Definitely check Vanilla OS out. I'll be sharing my long term experience with Vanilla OS soon. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch that. Do let me know what you felt about Vanilla OS in the comment section below. Just another distro or it's got potential. I'd love to hear from you. Well, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out my list of 15 blockbuster flatpak apps that you must have installed in 2023. This is the next text. See you guys in the next one.